Hello again, everyone. Today I am going to be swatching the ink samples I got from Goulet Pens for my birthday. For those of you that don't know, you can get free samples of ink for your birthday. You have to sign up for their mailing list and tell them what your birthday is, obviously. This is a voiceover today, so you are going to see all these swatches and then I'm going to try and remember my first impressions when I actually swatched these. You will see the swatches go down in this uh, traveler's notebook that I have set up for swatches specifically, and this is in the back section of that where I am swatching samples. So I'll put a link down below to this notebook setup. And that's the automatic pen that I have associated with this setup that will be in the linked video. This is Noodler's Violet, which I was a little bit irritated that I got some Noodler's inks as samples, but you know, I'm, if you're not familiar, it seems like Goulet is pretty keen on Noodler's ink. I have had uh, some troubles with them, so I haven't been that crazy about their ink. But this particular color is actually quite beautiful and um, this, so this is the uh, glass dip pen from Moon Man. I will put a link to that particular product below because it's not in the original setup video. I just thought I would use this today because it was handy at the time. And um, so what I was saying is that the Noodler's inks, the, some of the problems I've had with them in the past is that they take a really long time to dry and even after they've dried, I get some smearing. Uh, I've since actually heard that you could dilute them with water, and in some cases that's actually recommended. So I may actually go back and uh, dilute some of my Noodler's ink with water, maybe 50-50, because that, that's what some people were recommending online, and see if it makes a difference. This particular ink didn't seem to take forever to dry. so. And then this is Monteverde Napa Burgundy. I tried to keep the color families together. Monteverde, I kind of had mixed results with. Uh, some of the samples that I've had or bottles that I've had have turned out really, really nice and flow really nicely. And I've had some flow issues with others. Uh, one of the nice things about getting ink samples is that you get samples that you might never otherwise have tried. Um, there were one or two inks in here that I thought were uh, were really nice and I didn't really know much about them, so I'll, I'll talk about those when I get to them. This Monteverde ink um, seemed really pretty. I, I would say none of these colors necessarily spoke to me, but I will probably try them in various pens nonetheless. I mean, this is a pretty good red color. And uh, actually that Noodler's Violet was probably my favorite color of the bunch. If it wasn't Noodler's, I probably would have bought a bottle of it. <laughs> but I'm going to try out my other Noodler's pen or my other Noodler's inks with um, some dilution first to see, to see if it's worth going back to getting some bottles of Noodler's. Yeah, this is a pretty standard good red. I uh, it, it seemed to dry fairly matte, but it dried fairly quickly. You'll see with that Noodler's Violet, it seemed to come down pretty wet, and it is taking a little longer than the Monteverde ink is to dry. Um, I forget which color it was that I had that just basically never dried on the page. It might have been uh, Tiananmen, which is a really beautiful red. Oh, and I was moving back to another color. So this is Private Reserve Orange Crush. And these actually were really nice and smooth going down. I have two different Private Reserve inks that they gave me as samples. Uh, this orange is actually really, really beautiful. And if I didn't already have an orange that was so similar <laughs> to this one, I, I might uh, consider getting this in a bottle. I haven't ever, I hadn't ever tried uh, private reserve inks. So based on this, I might go look for some other colors because it went down really smoothly. The color was really, really vibrant. And um, at least as far as I can tell with the automatic pan, pen and the dip pen, it kind of checked the boxes for me that I, uh, for things that I look for in an ink. But this is actually a really beautiful, vibrant orange. 
I just have, I'd say one or two colors that's, that's very similar to this. Otherwise I would completely get it. The one thing that I'm not that crazy about uh, with swatching samples is that it's really hard to get these tools into that little sample bottle and sometimes I'll get ink on um, the handles. So that one's Noodler's Polar Purple, which I have since discovered is actually a permanent ink because I did do some water tests on these and this was the only one in this batch that were permanent. See, I tried pretty well, or, or tried pretty hard, not to get ink on the handle of these instruments, and that's part of the reason why also I'm holding it way back, otherwise I would just get ink all over <laughs> my hands. Um, this particular ink seemed to dry pretty fast. I mean, you can see that Noodler's Violet up above is still wet, and the Monteverde and the Private Reserve is mostly dry at this point. Um, but I don't know, I mean, the writing of the Noodler's Violet was not still wet at this point, but that swatch really, really was. And maybe if any of you have any, um, any experience with uh, watering down Noodler's ink, um, I'd heard that it just had so much pigment in it, like more pigment than, uh, or the most pigment that they could fit <laughs> into the formula. So, um, so watering it down was advised, but I had never heard that until recently. Um, and personally, I kind of like to use my inks right out of the jar. So Noodler's is a little bit of an odd bird. But again, this polar purple is really pretty and it is a permanent ink if you're looking for a permanent ink. I think here I'm trying to figure out how I want the color the colors to be on the other page. This is another private reserve in Sherwood Green. And this one went down just as smoothly as the orange. And uh, I really, really liked the feel of it. It came off of the automatic pen really smoothly and easily. And the same was true for the dip pen. This particular green is just a little bit light for my liking. Um, speaking of Sherwood greens, the Diamine Sherwood green, which is much darker than this, is, is actually one of my favorite greens, but this is a little too light for my tastes. But if you're looking for this kind of lighter green, um, this might be a good choice because it seems like the Private Reserve ink is, is a really nice flowing ink. And one of the reasons why I hadn't gotten any private reserve ink yet in full bottles is that I'd heard that it runs really dry, but that didn't seem to be the case with uh, these two that I had as samples. Yeah, that, I was just showing that that was staining pretty well on the, on the paper towel that I had there. Okay, and this is uh, Sailor Manyo Sumire or Sumir. Not sure how that's pronounced. Um, but, you know, you can't go wrong with the Sailor Manyo colors. I think they're all really, really nice. With, uh, you can see it got on the handle there. Um, this one I thought was just a little too close to one of the uh, Pilot inks that I have. Um, this seems kind of similar to Pilot Iroshizuku's uh, Ama Iro. Um, and I have both that and Konpeki, so I didn't really feel like this was a color that I would get because it was just too close to the Ama Iro, I thought. But it's a beautiful blue. And... It flows well, like just about any sailor ink does. Yeah, and sometimes it's hard to know how far to go down with the dip pen too, because it's hard to see where the ink starts in the little jar. Okay, 
Okay, so getting down to the last two here. This one is Twisby Blue Black, which is a beautiful ink. I, I've been pretty impressed with all the Twisby ink that I have, but again, this color was just a little too similar to other ink that I already have in my collection. It probably goes to show how, how much ink I have. <laughs> But these samples are always fun to try out new brands and uh, new colors that you wouldn't normally otherwise try. This is actually a beautiful dark blue. If, if you're looking for a dark blue that's the shade, the, the Twisby ink is a good one. Although I would say that I think that uh, Twisby's Midnight Blue is probably a little bit more my speed. Um, this one's really pretty too, but the, the Midnight Blue is, um, is more my preference. Okay, getting to the last ink, this is Dea Tremendous Document Dark Blue. So this was really nice to see, um, and this one I'll definitely use. Uh, I have been thinking about getting this Document Dark Blue for a while to either use on its own or try and mix with other document inks. Uh, it is really, really pretty. So this is actually the one out of the eight that I may end up getting, um, mostly for mixing purposes, but I, but I would also use it for sketching. So we're approaching the end here, so I'm going to go ahead and ask if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day, and if I come up with any more comments before we're done here, I'll uh, say them as I think about them, but I think that's generally it for today. I hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to let uh, Ule Pens know what your birthday is so that you too can get free samples on your birthday. Oh, and I thought I was done, but, th but that is also uh, showing that it's pretty staining. So the dark green up above, or the, the mid-tone green up above, and then this Diatramentus document ink were the two most staining out of these eight. And then I'm going to show you these all close up, and then we'll, that's a wrap. Oh, uh, this Noodler's Violet, as you can see, it's still a little damp. So um, it could have been how heavy I put it on the page, but uh, I don't know. The Noodler's Polar Purple actually dried fairly fast. And there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.